my secondary, second poetry collection after Zubinarua, published a couple of years ago. And I want to thank Paul for um, his patience and support and for producing a book as I envisaged it, which uh, I was really proud of. Thanks to many people who've offered support and critique, and you're all thanked by name at the back of the book. And congratulations to Chris and Patrick on their publication. For reasons I don't clearly understand, and into which I am not minded to de delve, I I'm somewhat averse to explaining my writing. Um, however, <laughs> I thought it might be interesting to try to give some context around Jungle Jim as a, as a poetry collection. And uh, we'll see how that goes. So, <laughs> the inventor of mathematical logic, without which we would not be in this world as it is, George Ball was married to Mary Everest, Mary Everest, who was a um, pioneer educationist, a mathematician. And they had a daughter, Mary Ellen, who in 1880 married George Hinton, bigamist, mathematician, science fiction writer, and inventor of the word tesseract, to refer to, refer to a cube extended into the fourth dimension. George and Mary had a son, Sebastian, who invented the jungle gym. In British English, climbing frame, in Chicago in 1920. One way of representing the tesseract is as a net, also known as a height cube. And that's what Salvador Dali used in his 1954 Corpus Hypercubicus, which depicts the crucifixion, crucifixion of Christ on a hypercube cross. This shape is made of four cubes stacked on top of each other and further cubes arranged on the, the exposed faces of the second most cube. Is that clear? <laughs> <laughs> this shape is at the centre of a jungle gym. The jungle gym encapsulates, encapsulates a hypercube and there is a boy hanging upside down in that hypercube, thinking about time, time itself. Now for Hinton, consideration of the fourth dimension was a moral imperative, that an intuition of the fourth dimension was to move beyond the limitations of the up, down, the left, right, and to work in a, in a world that was egoless, interrelated, composite, and that upside, upside down boy, I call him Jungle Jim, others call him Bat Boy, is doing exactly that, vibrating with a sense of unreality, of timelessness, puzzling his origins and his destination. Trapped, yet comforted by the constraints of the tesseract, trepidatious of what may lie beyond. And my aim in writing the collection was to perform a sort of senso archaeology, a friend ontology, a peri epiphenomenology of the consciousness of that inverted youth. And in doing so, to perhaps uncover how much of the boy persists in the man. I have time to read a short poem, I think. Um, this, to give a flavour of the collection. This is a poem which perversely doesn't appear in the collection. <laughs> it's, it's called Black Dog Nimbus. Black Dog Nimbus sits on my chest and threatens to lick my face and neither banana sandwich nor a sparking train set which runs from living room in furs to eider down bedroom to carbonic bathroom to sugar cube larder through cold cut kitchen and to the end of horseradish and evergreen garden where it ducks under barbed wire and stutters down through prize nettles and pictures torn from H&E to the tracks where pennies are flattened before the onrush. Thank you everybody. <laughs>